Welcome back to the Mark and Mitch show. It, it has been a while, Mark, that we have spoken because we have been super busy doing interviews for both yeah. Talking Rock and uh, Rock Talk with Mitch LaFon. But uh, here we are. And you, last night or recently, got to see Judas Priest in New Jersey and the return of Glenn Tipton. That yes. Is, uh, wow. What, <laughs> yeah. what, a, what an amazing emotional moment. Uh, you know, they, 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 they mixed the set list up. And that was because they could, they wanted these three songs together, I guess, uh, Metal Gods, Breaking the Law, and, of course, Living After Midnight, which was the encore. So the band left the stage, and then Glenn Tipton walked on the center stage, you know, before the rest of the guys came out, and the place just went nuts. They, you know, Rob Halford never even said that, said Glenn's name. It was kind of, it was, it was wild, but, of course, we all knew who he was, and we're just uh, so glad he was there, and, and looked great, and... He sounded great. He was playing. I think he even did the, the little solo for for Living After Midnight. Uh, great to see Glenn back on the stage with Judas Priest. What a fun night and what a great, great tour. As you know, Black Star Riders just blew the doors off the place. Right at 7 o'clock they go on, followed by Saxon at 8. And Priest came on about 9.15 from what I remember. So this tour is a tour that cannot be missed. And I know you saw Black Star Riders and Saxon on one of their solo dates. Yeah, I saw them at the uh, Chance in Poughkeepsie. What a, what an incredible night that was. Don Jameson was there, and we hung out all night, and we spoke about stuff. And I got to go on the Black Star Riders bus and talk to Scott Gorm for an hour, which is like, whoa. Like, you know, he, he really is sort of like rock royalty coming from Thin Lizzy and all that. But it, what a great night that was. Um, I, w I got there for the sound check, and I got to see Saxon. Saxon ran a nearly three-hour sound check. They started at about 3.30. I left at 5.30, wow. and by 6.30 is what I'm told they finished. So <laughs> I think I think they played their set wow. twice, quite <laughs> quite frankly. But it was it was yeah. great. It was it was such a great evening, and and of course coming down from Montreal, the weather in Poughkeepsie was so much nicer. You have grass. We're still on 18,000 feet of snow. So <laughs> you know. It was great, absolute great stuff, and and Black Star just delivered. Just they deliver the goods. And uh, by the way, you mentioned living after midnight just before. Uh, fun fact: March twentieth, nineteen eighty, is when that single was released. So there you go. Wow, wow, that is that's wild. So yeah. twenty, let's see, what twenty, uh, thirty, thirty, thirty-eight years to the date where Glenn Tipton appeared on stage last night. Wow, great stuff. Yeah, see, so there you go. And, and and of course Richie Faulkner was two months old at the time. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was born in January of 1980. So, so uh, just quickly, wow. uh, what are your impressions of of Richie? I think the world are sort of we all have our impressions that he's just the perfect fit. But what was it like <clears throat> for you to see him and Sneep, Andy Sneep, and uh, yeah. And I'll be totally honest here, and, and uh, Richie, I think, is is great. I've seen him with the band before. You know, when he first joined, I was like, oh, I don't know, but he's won me over 100%. He, he's got the, the sound. He plays perfectly. He's got the, the, the right attitude. He loves the style of music, obviously, and... And not to sound like a poser, but he's got the look, you know, I yeah. mean, he comes out with the with the shades on and the great hair and the leather outfit, which for me, Andy, is, he, he really sounded great. And I, I had uh, I had so much fun at the show last night. There was just at first seeing him with, you know, kind of that like hipster beard and, you know, not really much <laughs> hair up top. And, and it, it, they did leather him up. I, know, I noticed on some of the YouTube clips at the at the first show, he he didn't really have all the leather gear that he had last night, but you know, it, it, I, I felt like, I felt like it's a different, it's a different person on stage who maybe has a slightly different uh, look than you'd expect from, from, from Priest. Judas Priest. Yeah. Uh, all that aside, the guy did excellent with the guitars. I didn't hear one bum note out of him. I, it did seem Richie did a lot more of the solos, which was fine with me. Uh, and, Big props to to Andy Andy Sneap, you know, yeah. for for going out there and, and doing it. It's just all I'm trying to say. It's a little jarring seeing somebody you're not used to up on that that stage in that yeah. in that Glenn Tipton uh, position. And it's you know it's hard a little hard to get past that at first. At but first, three songs in, I was past it. 
You're like, oh, there's, there's four priest guys and an Arctic monkey. What's he doing there? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of got that New York City, Brooklyn hipster look about him, you know, but which is fine. But he's such a great producer. I mean, you look at what he did with Accept and now, of course, this this wonderful piece of, of, of wonder here. Yeah. Man, I would love to see Metallica and or Kiss hire Andy Sneap and, and put out an album because I think... I think Metallica still have a lot to say, and I think they're just getting the wrong producers to say it. And I think Kiss, yes. Kiss is sort of putting themselves in a box by having Paul do it. And it's, it's no offense to Paul. I love Paul, but I think every band, not just Kiss, needs an outside set of ears to say, that's working, that's not working, try this. And I think Andy would, would, would take Kiss to that next level. I mean, can you imagine him producing Eric Singer on drums and producing Tommy? He can right, create yeah. magic, absolutely create magic. So let us quickly move over here to, to Kiss, because we always love talking about Kiss. A lot yes. of vault experiences yeah. happening with Gene Simmons. He's had Bruce Kulick out, Eric Singer's been out, Ace Fraley's been out, and now he's sort of completing the puzzle. He's got uh, Vinny Vincent coming out and Peter Chris. Um <laughs> Has Gene done the, the vault reunion tour and, and left Paul on the side? <laughs> Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's it's odd that Paul hasn't shown up to one. I mean, it's it's now become awkward, you know. Right. All the all these ex Kiss members and and I would almost guarantee Paul has been invited, but he's chose to to stay out of it. So it yeah. definitely makes you speculate and think about what's going on between those two guys. Um, but he's done it before, son. you know, with Gene Simmons, okay. uh, Family Jewels. He didn't He didn't want to appear on that TV show for many, many years. Um, yeah, he did eventually, right? Eventually. At the wedding, I think. At the yeah. wedding right. So, yeah. and probably begrudgingly. Uh, uh, right. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. Uh, that's fine. Wait till Paul does the Paul Vault experience, you know. I'm just surprised that that, the vault experience exists because those essentially are kiss songs and they could have, after they retired, mined all those songs on multiple kiss releases. And now they sort of can't. Yes. Uh, So, you know, and that hurts both Paul and Gene in terms of the partner. Anyway, whatever. Uh, Still, it's exciting. Peter Chris is, is going to be fun to see. I thought for sure he was the one that was going to hold out. You know, he, he did retire. He did his I'm not performing anymore retirement tour thing last year. And now here he is. So that's great to see. And Mitch, and Mitch what has he said? He said, I, I briefly read something and it sounded to me like he was almost downplaying it a little bit, saying he wouldn't be there very long, but he was going to stop by, which I thought right. was a little... I don't know. It seemed a little weird that he would he would just stop by and wave for the fans and leave and and not hang out. But that was the vibe I got, at least what he was saying. Maybe it'll when it actually happens, it'll be different. But uh, is that the vibe you got? Yeah, I mean, that's what he said. He said, I'm coming in and uh, coming in and coming out. I'm I'm sort of dropping in to say hello. But that I guess that's fine to to say that. I mean, he's over 70 years old. I'm sure he doesn't want to spend eight hours you know, talking about Kiss and, and, you know, he comes in for an hour, half an hour, takes a couple of pictures, tells a couple of stories. And now he, it seems reasonable. And I think it was I think it was fair to offer that as a a warning that you're getting a little something special because I know fans. Okay. He he comes in for half an hour or an hour and says, hey, I'm here. And then the next day online, it's going to be, oh, Peter was such an ass. He left. And it's like. You can't win. You can't win. Yeah, so yeah. I think it doesn't hurt him to say, listen, I will be there, but it's going to be hi, thank you, Gene, and off I – I don't know. I think it's it's fair, you know, because you can't win. You can't win, you know. Right, but I but he's you. there. And Vinny. I, I'm excited about the Vinny appearance because I don't know the last time when Gene and Vinny were in a room together. Who knows? For the last 10 years, they might have been having lunch every Saturday. We don't know. But as a fan, right. just looking at the public perception, it's these guys haven't been in a room for 25 years. Is it going to be awkward or is it going to be hugs and kisses? You know, that'll be a fun vibe. And uh, we'll see. We'll see. There's there's the kiss cruise coming up. We'll see what happens. And hopefully, 
I mean, I know there's there's a pre-party with uh, Four by Fate for the Kiss Cruise coming up, and uh, it'll be fun. All these guys, you know. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And what another random kind of Kiss thing that that seemed to pop up was this picture of Eric and Ace in the recording studio. Do yeah. we have any additional information on that or thoughts on that? Uh, well, the only thing I've heard, and I saw that picture of, of Eric and Ace, and uh, even even the guys in the Kiss world uh, tweeted that out and, and put that on their Facebooks. I'm not sure exactly what they were recording. Uh, I would love to think that it's a uh, Japanese 2000 farewell tour <laughs> live show that they're fixing up, but that's just, you know, dreams. The word that I got is that Ace is recording some kind of album and that... Eric was playing on it. So, yeah, so probably, probably most likely for, for Ace's album. That, that's, that's what I'm told, but speculation, total yeah. speculation. I mean, you cannot run with right. that as a quote, you know, Mitch LaFon said, because Mitch LaFon said, this is what I heard by somebody on the internet. So, mm, mm. right. But, but you. yeah, Ace, I mean, it's funny. If you look at it, you've had, you've had, like I said before, Gene in a room with Ace, Gene in a room with Eric and, and Bruce, and, and now you have Ace and Eric, and now you have Vinny and Peter and Gene. It, it's like everybody's come together, and, and the Eric and Ace thing was apart from the Gene thing. Where's Paul, right? Yeah. We run around saying, yeah, where's it, Izzy, but now we should be running around saying, where's Paul? <laughs> <laughs> right. And it is interesting because we know Gene is doing a couple songs with Ace on this this upcoming record. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if Eric is providing the drums to one of those songs, which would practically make it a, a Kiss song. You know, Gene, Eric and and uh, Ace on, on a song. That would be amazing. It would be. I mean, it would be. I mean, that's the one lineup where they did that, those Japanese shows, those farewell shows where. Eric took over for Australian Peter. too, right? Austra- yeah. yeah. Well, the the yeah the East. Uh, I think uh, was there New Zealand too. Anyway, they did those ones, so. and you look at those videos, and I have a couple of those shows on bootlegs. That is such a killer lineup. That's the lineup I actually would love to see ride out the the history. But mm. anyway, and in in the books, I think, believe it is in Gene's book, he, he actually speaks highly of that short little era of of history if you will saying that that when peter left the band suddenly aces ace he felt ace kind of stepped it up when when eric singer joined was was with them on that so uh yeah definitely an interesting little anomaly in in kiss history there oh, which i would that. love to see anomaly you threw in a, an ace freely yeah, album yeah, plug. Yeah, well, well done that was good good go. anyway we'll see we've got we've got all this stuff coming up we've got the kiss cruise and who knows what's going to happen by November 1st? Will we have some kind of exciting announcement? Will there be some kind? I mean, we're, we'll see where we go after, right? The Kiss Cruise is end of October. So we'll see Halloween, November 1st onwards, what, what the world of Kiss brings us. Uh, I know that they've trademarked the end of the road. So, you know, will it be the end of the road by then? Who knows? Uh, right now, it's exciting. It's exciting seeing those pictures show up on your Facebook page page or on twitter here's ace and peter together here's ace and yes and Vinny and gene and i don't know i don't know it looks good yeah, anyway definitely, definitely seems like something's going on that's for sure ah you gotta love it you gotta love something it. something bigger yeah bigger and better the yeah, end of cool. the road well that trademark well, well we'll talk about that after anyway uh where can we find you mark on on the wonderful internet yeah, of course, TalkingRock.net. We have uh, talking the Talking Metal podcast. Uh, a lot of a lot of great guests. Just interviewed your friend uh, Damon Johnson yesterday. I'm going to try to get that up uh, pretty much immediately. Hopefully, in the next couple days. And um, we have Dead Daisies. In theory, we're supposed to be interviewing them tomorrow. The Dead Daisies in New York City. However, there's a snowstorm that just started, so I'm not sure if that's going to be happening. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's Talking Metal, the podcast. How about you, Mitch? Well, good old uh, Westwood One Rock Talk with Mitch LaFon, and I've got uh, all kinds of weird and wacky guests. I have uh, Shine Down coming up, John Waite coming up, uh, John Bush, John Karabi, of course, from the Dead Daisies. Nice. So just a lot of stuff. So so find me. Just type in you know Rock Talk with Mitch LaFon, Westwood One, 
And of course, the show will pop up. And then you can just follow me at Twitter. No, sorry, on Twitter, at Mitch Lafon. At Twitter would not find me. But at Mitch Lafon, M-I-T-C-H-L-A-F-O-N. And of course, uh, I post my episodes and a whole bunch of other uh, stuff that you can check out. So there you go. A lot of fun. Thank you, sir. Very cool. Yep. We'll talk to you next time. Cheers.